Hello again. We wanted to do another video. We are on our five year anniversary for many things, so we thought we would come back. We had an opportunity today, slow day at work. So, yeah, lots of things. So, five years since we were DF'd, and then yeah. Lufa died right after that. So, that was a big moment. Then we got Swiffer. Uh, all within about eight days, all this has happened five years ago. So, yep. it's an anniversary time I guess for us and five years can seem like a long time and other ways it's not yeah right so we thought maybe it'd be good for because we were obviously reminiscing over things and you know you always go back and and think about you know how you are doing in your recovery or how it's an opportunity I guess to rehash those types of ideas because usually, you know, if you're making plans, it's a five-year plan. At least that's one of the things you can have as a notch to, mm. you know, to try to get things done by. Goals are good. Um, I even see Facebook posts. Just remember, five years ago, you expected you to be where you're at. Well, not really. I had no us. idea. Right. So, but it's a good time opportunity to go back and look at and see. Because I think a lot of people would wonder about the recovery process. You know, so... Maybe we just answer some of those questions about how we feel in that regard. So, you know, a lot of people will say, healed. You know, are, are you yeah. healed? Yeah, that's a really good question because we've had people give comments on our channel that have been out for decades. And it's like, at, at what point do you not even look at this XJW stuff anymore or, or whatever? So it varies for everybody. If you're personally asking me, am I healed? I don't know if abuse, how do I explain this? How do I explain myself? When you've been abused, it's like it makes up sort of you as you are as a person. Um, you have different circumstances in your life or whatever. So am I healed? I don't know if I'll ever be healed. Um, just like I don't think I'm completely healed from the child abuse that I experienced. I, I don't think I'll ever be it's just that's what that's what makes me me so yeah in some ways it gives you a weakness in some ways it makes you a lot stronger yeah for sure um so yeah and that's a good good illustration as far as that goes so i suppose it depends on what your definition of healed is mm -hmm. um you could easily just you know pretend it didn't exist but that's not really healed either you know and i and some people will say, oh, you know, time heals. <coughs> Sorry. Every video I sneeze. <laughs> so, <laughs> you may want to wipe out you know, the teacups over there. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. But some people will say, you know, that time heals all wounds. Well, I don't necessarily agree with that, and, and here's why. I, I illustrate it this way. Have you ever stubbed your toe? More than likely, you'll say Yes. Now, the question is, when? So, obviously, we've all probably, you know, stubbed our toe, but circling a date would be hard unless it was something mortifying where you, you know, broke your toe or something like that, ripped off your nail. Um, you're just not going to remember it. Speak of the Swiffer Devil. Yeah, here she is. Oh, I have a little quartz. Oh. I'm healed. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> but, uh... I will say that. I want to okay. finish that. Yeah, though. go ahead. But now imagine that you've stubbed your toe, and you're enough events have gone by since you stubbed your toe that you know you pretty much it fades into existence. You remember it happened, but you don't remember when, and you may not even remember the exact specifics again, unless it you know you broke your your toe or something. But if as soon as you stubbed your toe, we locked you in a box. Mm -hmm. No events have happened. Time could go by for an eternity, and nothing would cover that up. So I guess in some ways, you could answer that question of healed as, well, what have you done since then? You know, and I think in that regard, for us, at least, because we've had certain goals we've been trying to achieve, in some ways we haven't lived our life. We've locked ourselves in that proverbial box. So even though some things have happened that you know, put it in the distance. Other things have not, which keeps it right there. Mm-hmm. For sure. 
And I think it's difficult sometimes to get closure on things when when you, you know, it's like I said before, it's just not so cut and dry in our situation because we were literally kicked out for my Bible studies question. <laughs> as dumb as that sounds, even saying it out loud, again, it sounds so ridiculous. Um, and the events that transpired for from sure. that, obviously. But. For sure. I, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, your point of not being able to get closure, that's that's a big one, you know. It's not like you could say, you know, like a lot of times when there's abuse or there's a certain situation, a lot of times an apology is like the first step in that. But what, what's, the, what's there to apologize for? And I know they're not going to come knocking on my door to apologize to me. So, and you know. They don't do any wrong. That was their, one of their yeah. latest videos. You know, right. that's another thing. We don't, we don't watch any whatever. We, anything that we get, we don't watch any society material. Not yeah. anymore, no. I think we watched it for a little while. You know, I think that was just part of our... It's a routine, you know. Yeah. You sort of just keep up with things. And and after a while, it was like, what am I doing this for? Well, and you especially know? since we, you know, started to... We took, you know, our first year. Yeah. You know, you're trying to get your head wrapped around it. And then I think as soon as that summer came around, we were... We just were going all out on that house to restore that house. 2020. Yeah, yeah. right? Isn't that the year we were? Yep, and we started YouTube in 2019. Yeah. So. Yeah, so about the, yeah. it was, was it a year later then? Anyway. Yeah. Whatever the case, we, as soon as that happened, it was like, we didn't have time for anything else. You know, We don't watch any XJW videos either. I, I very rarely watch things anymore. If, if something piques my interest, I honestly... I think a lot of people are this way. Maybe it's just the society that we live in where it's so easy to just slide forward or swipe or your attention just isn't captured long enough. And I think we as a society have lost the art of conversation, lost the art of book reading and keeping our attention span long enough to hold a topic. And so sometimes I'll watch something it's like, okay, after three or four minutes, I, my attention's not held it long enough. I just skip to the next thing. So I'm sure that there's lots of good things that are being said, but I just don't have the time to sit there and watch hours on end. It's just the season of my life I'm in. I do not have the time. Yeah. And, and I think that's a good point also in why we haven't put out many, many, many of our own videos. Yeah, you know, and it's, and it's in some ways you don't really feel relevant. I mean, yes, everybody has a voice and that voice is relevant. To this, so that's not what we mean. But... Um, we, people are busy, you know. So, and again, that other people's circumstances may be different, and we appreciate that as well. And there are people that are in retirement. There are people that are in you know just different stages of their life, okay. or just in that healing stage where they, you know, we can use that term loosely again. Um, but that healing stage where they need that support, you know, almost yeah. at the ready. Uh, I don't need a lot of it. And I think so. That's not to diminish from that. It's just yeah. again where we're at in our. Yeah. I mean, we can only give what we can give and the time that we have to give. But I know that some have reached out to us and have said that we personally have helped them, which is great. And I'm not saying us only, but yeah, we've helped them. Yeah, we've played a role in helping. Again, another another two cents in there uh, helps somebody progress and something that somebody can say. that. Yeah. And I would hope that furthering some more videos could potentially help somebody else. Um and a lot has happened. My goodness. That's what I. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Is like things in the organization. Things that have been. Like identity makers or staunch beliefs for the last hundred years now have changed. Yeah, the, I mean the ministry work. Let's face it; it's all but dead. Pretty much. It's it's all but dead now. It's just standing by a cart and. Letter writing. Maybe. What's, maybe. What's the difference? Handed you a magazine. I mean, go to jw.org. Welcome to Costco. I love you. If you know that reference. Idiocracy. <laughs> Should be. Welcome to Amazon. I love you. Uh, they, they got the idea right, but uh, just the wrong company. So Amazon's turned into that behemoth where now you can get your medical supplies from there. Pretty soon you'll be able to order a surgery. Amazing. Here's your scalpel. <laughs> just do it yourself. DIY surgery. Um, okay, let's rein it back in here. So, <laughs> okay, how about this one? Are you happier now? 
Am I happier? I don't know. I think putting our life on hold, like you said, we really haven't enjoyed the things we love to enjoy. Like we've done some car, we do, that's all we do is car stuff, but like we haven't gone to very many shows. We haven't really built a whole lot. We built one this year, which is a different circumstance, but you know, we haven't really done a which lot. Which didn't end in happiness either. No, that was, that Good. was not. Uh, we'll make a video of that, I'm quite no. certain. Anyway. We're in the midst of things right now with that, but it's like, you know, we always, before, we would just about build a car for ourselves once a year. Yeah. We haven't built a car in a long time. Except for this one. Like Except for this one, right. So I'm just saying, like, the things that we love to do, I haven't hardly done any yard work. Just the bare minimum. It's like that's all we've done is just to get by. So am I happier? Um, yes and no. I'm happier that I don't have the pressure to... like get on the wheel so to speak like that wheel you know like i'm not out in the ministry i don't i i feel like i can be very integral does that make sense sure like i feel like i'm a person of integrity and i can be happy knowing that i've been integral that way that goes that debate joy versus happiness so mm -hmm. you know and i and again the two are different you can be absolutely unhappy and yet still be joyful Mm -hmm. um, just because you know that you're doing what you need to do. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a certain satisfaction in that. But I would say that uh, I'm freer. Yeah. I'm freer. And so I I didn't really view the ministry itself as a burden. Didn't really... Um, the, the meetings, the itinerary, if you will, I didn't find that a burden. Uh, content that, that that may be something else the every time you show up the hall you're learning from the faithful slave you, really we don't learn from each other just you know these eight guys are teaching us everything you know they're so arrogant yeah and that that kind of stuff that overlying i don't know what to call it it's arrogance well no but it's it's yes it's it is it's condescending but, arrogance it is but i'm talking about the overlying Spirit, if you will, the overlaying, um, yeah, the spirit is the best way I can explain it because it, it just taints everything. The whole vibe is twisted. It's the exact yes. Yeah. You know it. It. What do they call it about off color? Everything's colored in that skew. You know, so it's very difficult to have a positive view when. Oh, let's have another. Brag about us, you know. A video, organizational video. accomplishments. Organizational accomplishments. In other words, let me tell us you how great we are, you know. Yeah, um, that's just gross. Yep, so that kind it of stuff. Gives you as a feeling. How does that help me become a better person? Person. How does it help me become a better Christian? How does it actually help me develop the fruitage of the Spirit? You know, you label mm -hmm. off some of those different fruits. How does that help me apply it? Just sitting there and boasting about yourselves. Because mm -hmm. inevitably, that's all it is. It's not even what an individual in the congregation is doing. It, it's organizational boasting. Um, you've forgotten that you're good-for-nothing slaves. And in fact, you beat your fellow slaves. So anyway, get off on a tangent mm -hmm. there. So I would say freer. So in that way, I'm happier. Even though there are some many miserable things that I have to deal with day in and day out. Mm -hmm. I know I've become a whole lot more aware, and this goes into abuse. Um, it, certain abuse makes you stronger because you're aware of certain things. You're no longer naive uh, if you've grown up in an abusive household. Um, and some would be, call it trust issues, and I would say well-placed trust issues. Mm -hmm. As this last situation we went through with building this car and the reason why we built this car. Maybe that's what we'll post later is that a build up of that car because that would be a heck of a teaser. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, but that that whole idea that, where was that? You're aware. You're, you're, the abuse makes you hypersensitive and aware. Yeah, so you get, you start to be able to peg whole things a lot easier. So it's like, oh, I, you know, it's even with the elders and what they were doing to us. It was like, you know, this is 
very familiar to me mm -hmm. in some of the tactics that you were using mm -hmm. that I grew up with. Mm -hmm. it, it's a different situation, but the tactics are similar. And so then in business, um, in government, in, you know, whatever you might be able to apply to, in groups, individual mm -hmm. groups. Just dealing with peopley things. Yeah. Politics mm -hmm. with a small p, as, right. as uh, somebody we studied with said. Right. Um, peopley things. <laughs> people politics. But it, it gets into bigger politics, too. But uh, the point is, is that it's a trickle-down effect that, that you can see and you can identify those things. This is exactly like my parents did it. Or mm -hmm. this is exactly like Watchtower did it. This is exact. So, I mean, through that, that it's a superpower is what it is. It's a superpower. You're able to identify some of those things just, you know. So in some ways that makes you stronger. And some may view that as a weakness. Um, because, for example, you're not going to trust people because, well, let's face it, we're not trustworthy. Um, as Tiffany likes to say. Yeah, what I say about, like, you're, everyone's a villain in someone's story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in somebody's story, I'm a villain. You know, I get it. Yeah. You know, and, and and some boys is exaggerated, some boys may be true, you know, so um, I'm certainly not perfect, but uh, it's, it's uh, something that's easy to identify now, you know, some of those things. You just try to do better every day. Mm -hmm. So how about, we talked about groups and people-y things, how about, uh, should you use groups, XJW groups? There are a lot of them. They are, yeah, they're... And they're getting more numerous, more... Like segregated, even sectarianism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really know. Um, I think there's a time and place for them. Um, I don't know why people do that. Like they group themselves up, you know. Like I guess no man is an island, but I don't know what it is. I mean, I guess the motive of each group may be different. So there is some like groups that are into like doctrine and there's groups that have it's like they have a mission statement you know they have a cause um some groups are all about csa and and the awareness with that and some groups are about doctrinal things and some groups are about it doesn't really matter i guess They're, they all have sort of a motive and background and but there's a lot of di different little ones that that have to do with you know, like the groups, they group themselves up together like, well, we think alike, so we're in the same group. And if you don't think alike like we think, then you're out of the group, you know? That, that's <laughs> and, that's and, what I mean. And to some degree, you would expect that, you know? It's sort of like you say about XJWs. There's you know? only one thing in common that, that people have, that XJWs have, that they're XJWs and that they don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like JWs. They don't like that's JWs, it. yeah. Uh, so that's the only thing that they really have in common. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it's sort of like being a witness, you may go there and find out there's going to be clicks because there's people that are into car things, maybe. Yeah. Or there's going to be people that are into have children, and, you know, that becomes there. So, mm -hmm. I mean, cer certain part of that, you expect a little bit of clickiness. The clickiness ends up getting too much when it ends up shoving someone else out. Mm-hmm. You know, That's and true. so one of the – there's – when you're dealing with groups – We've, we've uh, and again, we don't claim membership to any group. Or, definitely not. Or whatever, but I definitely we have been present at different groups. Um, and usually you pretty much get the flavor of those groups pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and we've found some that are, we've heard stories of some, for example, religious ones. And I don't get, I, we usually don't get involved in those ones just because inevitably they end up being. There's a leader. That, yeah. I don't like Whether leaders. you like it or not, there's going to be a, a leader. And I, you know, and it's, it's very hard for even the most humble individual for somebody else not to look up to them and, and start idolizing mm -hmm. their own, ide their ideals, you know. Yeah. And then it ends up being a cult of personality or. Or uh, whatever. But some of them, you know, we've heard of. It's like if you even disagree with their ideology, they just pull another watchtower move. 
you're you're from Satan the devil and you know you, you need to leave here. leave it's, as opposed to well I don't agree with you you know but uh you know you're welcome to your own opinions you know mm-hmm. so it's it's uh even if you do determine that that's a satanic idea um well then make that argument as opposed to making them feel horrible about who they are like the Judas Iscariot you know turning on the Christ himself you know yeah. So there's that, or there's, there's a, I'll name this one. What's that one that you were commenting on? Which it was absolutely Watchtower. It was a Facebook group, right? Yep. What is the name of that one? Um, something empowered. Yeah, X J W empowerment or some damn thing. It's the exact opposite <laughs> of empowerment. Let me tell you, I could bring out the whole situation where. We would. I would like to do a video about it. It's I actually just re- screenshotted some of the conversation. I think there's only one little section missing. But the, and the head dude, the moderator, deleted her comment because I stood up for somebody. Yeah, that 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 the flavor again, the spirit of that is non-religious, and if you go against the grain, you get you get stoned. You know, you get stoned with comments and, and words. And so, in what way, and Tiffany's comment was basically about, you know, so in what way was that empowerment? If somebody got on there and claimed they were homosexual, and somebody religious came on there and, and stoned them, um, people here would be jumping all over it and, and, and defending. And yet, here's somebody that's religious who wants to state their ideals, yeah. not throwing rocks at anyone, and they're stoned for that. You know, and, and so Tiffany brought that out. Her comment was deleted. Within like eight seconds. It was amazing. And it was like, really? Are we, are we, we got a governing body here who decides what you can and you can't say. You know, so, oh, no, we, we don't have a governing body here. And the whole conversation that happened and then that was deleted too. Yeah, so it's like, like. It didn't even exist. Yeah. And it's just. I don't need to be yeah, censored you, everywhere I go. Yeah. I will just not come back here. Adulting is disagreeing. And having a respectful disagreement. And if you choose not to go back, that's your prerogative. I know we haven't been back. No. You know, um, but to silence someone, being an adult is how you deal with something else. It's like, here we've got somebody that we're also in the group who is attending a psychological, what do you call it? They're going to be a psychologist or whatever. Mm-hmm. And... They're like, well, some of the things you said are tri- saying are triggering. We're getting into this, you know. Yeah, I guess. We we could do a whole video about right. this. Let's not yeah. let's not dig into and it's that. Like, right now. But but I want to do want to say this. Okay. How is our dealing with our abuse from our backgrounds and from XJW triggering to you? No response, really. So, I, I guess what I'm saying is is that you really have to watch groups, you know, and, and get what you can out of them. Don't expect anything too much from them again. You don't, these people don't agree with you any more than they did when they were witnesses. And I, and I think that, you know, when you're coming out of the organization by whatever means or reason there is, <clears throat> whether you're leaving on your own accord or not, um, you're very vulnerable and you really don't know, and I'm just speaking generalities, I think you're very vulnerable and you have circumstances that will come upon you that you're not expecting. And so I think it's very natural for a lot of people to want to go to a support group or another group or find people that they sort of like vibe with, you know, and, you've and un- that can undergone, be dangerous or not. But you have un- un- undergone the same similarity of circumstance. And I think the I mean, tendency is though among XJWs more likely than not they will turn atheist. It, that, that's it's or, easier for a lot of people to throw it all the way than yeah. to separate it and just pick out what's real. Yeah, or what they believed and why they believed it. And I feel sad yeah. for people like that because it really does show that they were just drones. You know, they were just, uh, you know, for them maybe it was a cult then because they really didn't have a mind of their own. They just went mm-hmm. along with whatever somebody else said. Mm-hmm. Or... They just can't own up to it now. It's too hard for them to, to deal with. And I, you know, I'm not bagging on somebody that's their life and their sure. prerogative. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I've become very much anti. 
I was anti-group before. You know, it's, it's another thing people will say about, you know, oh, well, you joined Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, no, 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 I never did join Jehovah's Witnesses. Matter of fact, at both mine and my wife's baptism, we you are not dedicating your life to a man, talking about the person you studied with, a group of men, which is, you could say, the elder body or the governing body, an organization, that's pretty self-explanatory, or a work, generally referring to the preaching work or maybe kingdom hall builds or whatever. You're dedicating your life to Jehovah God himself. So we stood by that statement. When they came to my door, again, they, they were talking about how we're not really an organization in that sense. Uh, we just have to be an organization just to be organized, for one, and because the government's it, to some degree, it makes it easier when you're talking about, you know, tax purposes and whatever else. And I don't have a problem with that it, mm -hmm. until it turns the corner to saying, oh, well, we don't you have a clergy body. Us. Yeah, and you listen. We don't have a clergy body. And then all of a sudden, you do. Mm -hmm. So all your legalities mm -hmm. end up catch, catching up with you. You become a very legalistic organization is what it's become. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. No, that's right. I don't really know what to say. I don't. I certainly don't want to take up a bunch of time either. People have valuable. Their time is valuable. No. Yeah. So, it, it, hopefully that we've said something that you know helps you along your journey and recovery. Don't expect it to end. You're never going to be healed fully. You're going to have a scar. Mm -hmm. um, but that again, that doesn't necessarily mean you're not healed either. I've got some scars I've had since childhood, mm -hmm. and I but I still remember all those. Um, and sometimes they're still, they're still sensitive. They still hurt, you know, so expect that. And in some ways it's a superpower, you yeah. know, it's, uh, my brother talks about when his hand, he had a paint can from a fire explode on his face and his hand. He, and said, he was just a small yeah. child, like two, three years old. No. Yeah. And, uh, but it forever scarred his hand. It doesn't have any feeling in it anymore. In some ways that can become us. Um, and in some ways that's a power because eh, you're not really worried about hurting that outside of that hand much, or at least not having it, you know, affect you the same way mm -hmm. as it would normally. That is sensitive. So yeah, uh, some ways it's a weakness, some ways it's strength. Um, you end up developing superpowers out of it, um, that you maybe wouldn't have had otherwise. True. But don't expect it to be overnight. Same with healed. I find myself more irritated now. Not that I was not aware of some things, but now I've become hypersensitive to some of the things that are around there. You're easily annoyed with what? What do you mean? Yeah, by that? and some of that has to do with our goals, you know, because we, I mean, we haven't had a day off in four or five, five years, four years, right? Four years, four years for sure, four years. Yeah, I, we might have had a We've day had off moments of time, but not like a day where it's like, okay, let's do what we want. No, yeah. that has not happened no. in years. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, my work schedule was for the first little bit, 4 a.m. to midnight for the first probably two or three years. years. I would say that this last... Every day. Summer. Every single day. This last summer, you started sleeping in a little bit more yep. and going to bed a little bit more. But I think physically, you just had to. Yeah. So, like, now I'll be in bed at still, you know, midnight or so. But I'll sleep until 9, 8, 9, 7. You know, just depends. But... Yeah, it really depends on the day and what's going on. And it's and not that I don't have my 4 a.m. Mornings, mornings too, but I'm just, it's more, I would, I don't, I'm not a person that needs a whole lot of sleep, but I would consider it more balanced than it or was. Or you'd get up in the middle of the night for like an hour or two, and then you'd come back to bed. Yeah. That's more like what it's been like. Yep, I'll go, I'll go do whatever. Because just with what we do, a lot of times, I mean, we're dealing with people around the globe, mm -hmm. you know, so. He'll get some question in the middle of the night, and he'll go deal. And if Sorry. I happen to be up, deal I'll answer it. it, you know, why not? You know, I don't. It just so happens to be the nature of our business, and, and very much, very often, um, I don't want to say it's impulse buys, but when somebody needs something now, if you don't provide it for them, they'll find it elsewhere. You know, and if you mm -hmm. happen to have it, you get that sale because mm -hmm. you can reply right then. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and then also we've had a circumstance which we're going to deal with later on the internet we're dealing with it now but we'll deal with it on the internet later and then um we've had a really great 
November into December weather. We've been taking advantage of that. Our October stunk. We had a we had, we had like a, a foot of snow in on October. I don't remember fifteenth or something. Yeah, not, I don't remember. Not, when it was, it was like another recap of three years ago. Yeah. It was like, oh God, here we go. And so it took a little bit to melt, but it went away, and it was warm enough. We've only had a few days where it was like really cold, and then. Um, since then, like November into December, we're supposed to have like record-breaking warm temperatures for a couple of days, and then I think we are going to go into the deep dive pretty soon. Um, that's just the nature of North Dakota here. But that ain't even a deep dive, you know. Upper twenties is pretty comfortable for, but it's going to be the next couple of days will be forty. Yeah, near fifty or degree, near fifty-ish, forty. I'm 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 hoping we see fifty again, but that isn't going to forty-eight. Yeah, you can 48. keep dreaming, honey. Keep dreaming. So um, we're taking advantage of that, but I I don't know. I, I feel a little bit more of a draw towards YouTube. I'd like to be on there again some more, more than we have been recently. Um, you mean like once a year? I feel awful <laughs> that we've been gone so long. I, I, I'm not expecting to be gone that long. I wasn't expecting to be gone for eight months, seven months, whatever it's been. Yeah. Seven months. So we'll post this one and we'll we'll throw that car build on there. I think that'll be kind of fun teaser. It was a another. What in the a, head? Have you, anybody else do TikTok stuff? I know they're the they're the devil and and you know the government's gonna you know they're giving all this information to China or whatever else or I don't know what it is. What? <laughs> That's what everybody says, right? But. There's this TikTok on there about Susie. And Susie's a household oh, yeah. name because she doesn't like store-bought pesto. And if you know, you know. If you don't, eh, it ain't going to matter anyway. But <laughs> it's all of, they, everybody uses her as the intro to crazy stuff that happens in their lives. And it's like, why do I keep having these experiences that are just, I'm sorry, they're batshit crazy. You just can't make it up. It's just nutter. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tease. Okay. Anyway, enjoy the rest of the video. I hope you're coming along with your healing. Hope yeah. you find uh, happiness. Um, and I know really, you're. I know you're freer. And really, I think the main thing of it all isn't really happiness. I think it's really being at peace with the decisions that you make in your life. You want to be happy, but you really want to be at peace. Which you can't lead to happiness. Yeah, and and again, but that's to me that's the deep seated joy part. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be not so happy and still have joy knowing you did the right thing. I know when we left, I had joy knowing I did the right thing. Um, I shouldn't say left. When they kicked us out, that I held to the right thing. I mm -hmm. had joy, but I was not happy about the situation at all. So, yeah, it's the way it goes sometimes, but. Again, we hope you're able to uh, recover. If any way we can help, by all means, shoot us a message. Um, we want to be available. We're not anybody special, but, though. But, yeah. We'll give you our two we're cents. Not but enjoy the, the build. <laughs> so, I don't know how we always end up having to do a delivery in, like, no time whatsoever. But uh, this one, we've got three weeks to finish. We're going to repaint it. And uh, put some lettering on it. I've got to do some fix-ups on somebody else's work. It's not horrible, but it ain't great. Got to make it so the fenders mount the same. They're too high. Um, I don't like the color. Farmers and their John Deere green. Um, that's got to go. And like I said, those fenders are too high. We'll lower those down a little bit. Try to make them a little more even and repaint the whole thing, except for the fenders. We'll leave the fenders. I don't care that it's perfect, but I can't stand that green and yellow. Here we go. All right, it's been a couple hours. Uh, we decided to take the fenders off just to get access because this is just a cobbled mess on the bottom. Uh, holes drilled in the wrong place and funky and this is where it was mounted up way too high I want the fenders down more like where they're supposed to be so it don't look like it's jacked up in the ass end 
and uh, we needed to pull the fenders anyway just it'll be a better access for paint and this tab on this one is missing over here so I've got to drill these out and make the bracket there so that way that can be right but we had this metal laying around uh, already pre-drilled and my goodness if the holes didn't line up exactly with the boards on the inside in most of the places so uh, the only place it didn't is over here on this one but uh that's behind the fender i can run a nice wide uh one by not be in the way of the fenders now run it all the way out trim it out very quickly and we can do something else to trim out the rest later on but again we've got a minimal amount of time to get this done three weeks till we leave and uh yeah we want to get it looking decent before then so that's how far we've gotten right now okay so we got both panels fitted and the guy apparently used two different tape measures because it turned out different uh so we're gonna have to trim this side up but it'll still look okay this was all cobbled up in here these two this dimension isn't the same as that dimension the circle's kind of off up here. I'm going to try to round that off a little smoother on both sides. It's really bad over there. You can see it's just not circular. So we'll dink with that. I'll put a wide piece of trim on here. And I would have pulled all that underneath paneling off, but it was all glued in. And I'm sure it was going to be a hassle, so we just went over the top of it. And it gave us something somewhat even to form to anyway. And uh, now I'm cutting in the windows. They're already cut in. Now I just need to mount the finish mounting the frames these are just picture frames yeah and you can actually get concave glass which really makes it look pretty cool but anyway i don't know if i'll put concave glass in these or not or just stick normal glass in them for the time being one of them didn't have glass with it the other one did but not too bad so far okay so we got those cut in and mounted just temporarily no glass in them and uh, now i've been working on rounding out that C, just taking my belt sander and going underneath. And I think I've probably taken off about uh, maybe three eighths of an inch. And not perfect, but a lot better. Probably best told from the back side where you're just looking at the C shape. Just a little sharper. Still looks a little bit deep right there, but I think I'm gonna leave that. And then I'll do a little bit on this side, and that should be good enough. So, we've been sanding on it, as you can see, and this is what you look like after sanding on this for a little while. But we'll turn it around so you can see the progress we've made. We went ahead and finished the metal, and then Got this nice wide trim on here so it covers the metal, covers up all his boo-boos. And then uh, to give it support on the back side, just put another brace in there so that way I can screw into something heavy duty. So all this is, is like quarter inch plywood. And then I've still got to figure out what I'm going to do with this buckle mess up here in the front, especially right there. How can you not see that that's a horrible cut when you're doing that? But now you can see where those C's look a little bit better. It's still a little sharp over here. And so I could round it off a little more on this upside, but it's good enough for now. Better than it was, like I said. So now I just got to figure out how to do that. I've got the windows all cut in. I don't know if I'll fill that gap or if I'll just leave it. And I don't know if I'm going to stain these or paint them. It might be nice to stain them to match that right there, but trying to match somebody else's stain and what they did. It kind of looks like a mahogany color, but not really. Who knows? Might be better off just painting it. Anyway. There's the progress for day two. Hopefully we get that trim done tomorrow. 
and we can scuff up the hood, fenders, not fenders, excuse me, headlights, and those bars, windshield supports, and get it painted by this weekend. Okay, on with the tea today. I went and rounded up some materials that I think would work. Decided to box this in and let this other piece on the side overhang it. Uh, there it is kind of roughed in as opposed to kind of finished out over there. I had to rip out this panel here in the front. Uh, it just wasn't going to match up up here. At least then I can get it somewhat tight. Otherwise it would have been three layers of wood here instead of just two. And I can much easier smooth that down, fill it with a little bit of fiberglass and be good to go. And then I'll use that one panel down there on the ground to just go across here. And that'll get rid of another piece of plywood, which I hate having plywood on a tee as much as possible. Anyway. Okay, so I got just about everything sanded or scuffed. Making a litter of the shop yard here. Um... I just need to scuff on the inside. I just got everything sanded that I need to. Got all the runs out of it that I cared about anyway. And now I'm going to polish up these headlight buckets. These look awesome when you do this. Um, I take 322 of them and 600 and then puff them out. They're brass. They're very cool with purple lenses. But I'll do that. So I ended up with a yellow brass and a red brass it looks like so I went in the back and grabbed another red brass and then once I'm done with it since the DA won't get down the bottom I just hand sand the rest down here Oops. and then uh, take my power ball with some polish metal polish whatever I got around or maybe even uh, polishing compound you know rubbing compound so there's one all done. It's not perfect, but put that. Give away my secrets here with a nice purple lens. Really gives it a sweet vintage look. Far cry from these ratty old things. Can't stand them up. Don't throw away your old ones. Okay, I think this is day four. Anyway, three or four, one or the other. All these are laid out. We've got the back side of the doors sprayed, the inside sprayed. I keep forgetting what I've videoed so far. We're trying to get this done in a rush. Yesterday we had to run to Grand Forks, take freight down. And we also, the day before, got all this stuff done. Put the first coat on the outside. Uh, looks pretty rough as far as... Uh, just not being even but again it was I was just doing it with a detail gun to get a first coat on because we're not <laughs> we're not primering it and making it straight and the Model T world is fairly forgiving uh, especially when you uh, consider they were painted with a water hose so this stuff takes a long time to dry the black does it's still just slightly tacky in spots uh, hand slick but still kind of feeling soft but the silver seems to dry quick. And this is a 50-50. Gives it kind of a charcoal in one direction. It looks silver and in another direction. It'll look black. So it's, it's a perfect color for what we're doing. Um, now I'm going to blow a coat of it on this. The first coat on all these parts. And uh, yeah. Try to get it to where we got a, just a first coat on it. Starting to come to the end here with this paint. Well, that one. You know, got to be behind me. I don't know why. Well, I don't know what to say because I don't know what you've already said. We put the side ribs on, and that was. An interesting task in itself <clears throat> but it didn't give us too much trouble so that was good 
I'm really liking this gray. It's really a different custom color because it's got so much metallic in it, like gunmetal. Let me see if I can get in here. But you can see the ribs, and then those ribs will be painted black. It's pretty. You want to say something? Okay. And then these doors look pretty good. So we would never be able to get away with doing this on anything but a Model T. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Spray booth. It's, it's kind of hard <laughs> to, uh, when you hear spraying outside, it's uh, kind of hard to be uh, judgmental of a car they painted with a water hose originally. So the mm -hmm. Model T community. Uh, generally is pretty forgiving and Model T's in themselves are fairly forgiving, but uh, we dry spray everything. So it kind of gives it a matte finish. Hides a multitude of imperfections. Since we didn't, we don't bother doing the whole wet sand process to make them totally straight. Well, they're not totally straight. The way these things flex so much when you drive them. That's true. Do you want me to go on the other side? No, you're fine. That's the buggy. He's gone. Today is a perfect day. Light wind. <laughs> Not too heavy on the bug. A little chilly, so the mosquitoes are pretty much gone. We've been pretty dry, so there's not many mosquitoes this year anyway. Compared to some years, you go out and you're having to do the Macarena just to smack them off of you. Yeah, and it's been a pretty decent year for mosquitoes. We haven't had much. I'm, I'm pleased with this color. It's much better than that John Deere green. And I can't wait to get it a little bit farther along with the black accents and the gold accents. I should say brass, not gold, brass accents. But yeah, the wind is maybe, I don't know, maybe between seven and 10 miles an hour. We get a little gust every once in a while, but it's like just enough breeze to get airflow so you don't feel like you're just stagnant. It's pretty good. And I think it's about 60 some degrees, maybe 62, 64, something like that. It's comfortable. Cloudy. That's good. good. Okay, we are at the end of, I think it was day four. Everything is sprayed. We've got the doors on along with the glass. And these little, the little old style glasses is what we think they look like. I wish you could see it without this light, but I don't know how to turn off the light on my camera. Tiffany. Like the art. <laughs> the yeah, it's beautiful. But yeah, turn on the lights. You got the lights on. Yeah, I wish you could see how they look. In the the lens does not do it justice. They've got this iridescent. I don't even know. Iridescence is the best way to put it. And you can't even see it. You can't even see it at all. Kind of maybe there. Maybe. Uh, anyway. But. Uh, yeah, you can shut it off if you want.
but pretty good. It, Tiffany, Tiffany was saying that just she loves the way it ombres from the bottom. It's just the way it reflects. That light on your phone is making it look different. Yeah, it is, but I don't know what to do about that. I don't know how to. Oh, there we go. That, that worked. Yeah. And I'll take another walk around. Yeah, go ahead and when I go back around, you can turn the lights back on. Yeah, yeah, it kind of ombres up. Yeah. It's like black. But it's what's funny is that that's all the same color. It's just the way it reflects. One way it'll be yeah. silver, another way it'll look black. Like it, just like the hood, the top of the hood looks black, and that's not just not just shadowing at all. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, they st you still can't really tell with the headlights what they're doing. That iridescence. Just the way film picks it up, I guess. Anyway, but it, yeah. it's looking very good, I think. And we are, what day is it? I think it's day four or five. I, I think it's four. I've worked on this for two days. Yeah, so I had five. three days. Cause I, I think I had three days. So this is day five? No, day four. Day four. I think this I is day four. I mean, because yesterday we didn't work on it. We were down in Grand Forks. Put the fenders on. Yep. Um, the carriage lights, the windshield, and the windshield braces I need to paint yet. Whatever we're going to do with those. And then, obviously, the... <laughs> the signage yeah. the signage and we haven't decided whether we want to paint these black oh we did get these on too by the way oh, yeah the ribs are on yep and I so I, I think i did a video and showed that we were putting on yeah we i don't know if we want to paint those black that might set it off it might not it might decide not to i don't know i think we should just leave it be and do the stuff that's more important right now yeah and i think i will end up getting concave glass for it eventually um because at least those ribs can be hand painted, you know, you don't have yep. to match it off. Yep. Them. Well, and we could paint them when we repaint the bottom of it, because again, this was all black, and it's it's showing its errors. It's got, you know, scratches in it and stuff. But that's Model T's for you. It'll, it's dirty too. It's, it'll get scratches, but. Okay, here's where we're at so far. We've got the mirrors on, windshield on, bars on. Um, this bar needs a different turnbuckle. It needs a longer one to go down the shaft because I wanted to even up the windshield. It wasn't even before. Bugged me. Got the steps on. Now we're working on the fenders. Uh, I'm having issues with this because I do not like the way it aligns so far. Back. So I'm going to cut two and a half inches out of the running board and the splash pan at an angle to make that line up. It's probably a horrible idea because I'm going to burn the paint, but uh, it's better than the alternative of drilling through in the wrong spot back there and still having that gap there. And I'll probably paint this stuff later anyway, so we're doing it. Heck with it. Okay, there it is chopped. I could have probably went two inches instead of two and a half, but that's not too bad. That's pretty even. Now my gap's a little bit much. I probably should have cut that differently at an angle differently, but it's kind of hard uh, going from the back, but ah, whatever. It's fine. Hell of a lot better than it was. I'll drill a couple more pilot holes for this, and that will be it. Bolt that up. Bolt that up. Call it a day. So there's the second one rough cut out. All I did is take the cut off section and lay it in there to get my measurement for my next screw holes, which apparently I got off on that one. Oh well, it's not rocket science, it's a Model T, 100 years old. 
and then I just pick a drill bit about the same size as a carriage bolt hole that'll fit through there. It doesn't matter whether it's square or not because a yeah, carriage bolt will just pull through there anyway. And make it a square. It's like the play school little uh, box. Doesn't matter whether it fits, just force it in there. Oh, he's working on the tea, it's late and dark. They're harvesting and I can barely breathe. Can you read it? <laughs> He's got a projector here to make it a little bit easier. See? It's very difficult. It's not simply tracing up the damn tree. It gives me a foggy idea of what's going on. I think it looks pretty good. I mean, the outline is. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it gives me something to go by. But I mean, will, will you be able to... I mean, you're the artist here. I, I can't even make a stick figure look cute. <clears throat> it's getting dark early and earlier. It's only like 9.30, but... I guess our days are really early too. We were up about four o'clock. Uh, are you stopping? Um, I've got three tea left. Oh, you're gonna do the other side tonight too? Okay. Um, There's a moth inside the projector? Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm trying to put my light up. I got my license plate bracket, got it mounted, and I'm trying to get it to where it's going to be new fashioned, but in an old fashioned housing. So I'm just gonna cut this off and I think I'll drill it into the bottom of that, round this off. Hopefully that will just mount in there and I'll snap right back together and I'll drill a hole in the back of this or something to run my wires through. Let's just see when it's done. So it's pouring out, so I'm taking this thing down to the bank again. Because they've got a nice uh, underpass. I can park in. It's going to pour later on tonight. dry it off. Yeah, please. At least then it'll stay somewhat dry under there. Yeah, that should be enough. I just don't want it to ruin the wood. Okay. Okay, I just do a small update. Starting to get the lettering done. That rain did not do it any favors up there. That's why I don't like wood on the sides, and I much rather have metal clad because it does that junk. Once it gets wet, it starts swelling. Did the same thing over here, but that's okay. Helps it make it look old. Now I'm just doing the blocking. So, coming along. Oh, and I did finally get this done. And with it. And as with everything, it's always a nightmare. Even my license plate I had to trim in order to make fit in there because it wouldn't fit on the bracket holes. So that's all finished. Comes on with the headlights, brake light. And of course, it, 
everything's got to be a project so wouldn't work I had to trace the back to a ground which wasn't grounded then my switch under here for the brake light wasn't working so I had to replace that just stupid little things oh well such is a project <laughs>